Hello fellow heroes, it's Sean and welcome to Hero of the Table. Today I'm going to take a look at some models I got from Heroics and Ross. Uh, these are 6mm Cold War era models. I've actually had these for a while. Just got back into playing with these and with the scale. The release of the rulebook for uh, Battle Group North Ag. Well, that is the Cold War era rules that were released by PSC, Plastic Soldier Company. Going through those made me want to pull out some models and paint them and need to flesh out some of the different units that I need for that game. It's I have Soviet stuff, but that actually has some British as well and some of the support units I didn't have painted, but I had some laying around, so I thought I'd take a look at a couple of these so you could see what you get, the quality of the models from Heroics and Ross. Uh, first up, this is the GMZ Tracked Mine Layer. This is the code for them is SM101. These are a dollar, or excuse me, they're a pound 25 currently. Uh, you can see the models, pretty nice. A little bit of flash here on the back. Nothing too bad though. It's a fairly good looking model. It's not as much detail as some of the other manufacturers, but for the price that these are and you know, they're six millimeters, so once they're painted on a table, you're not going to be holding them this close to see what's what. So I am perfectly happy with the quality of these models, personally. And then, I actually painted one up to show you what it looks like painted. So this uses the same technique that I've used to paint other models. If you look up here in the corner, there will be a link to the uh, a tutorial on how to paint these. Um, I think I was painting T55s, but it's a pretty basic uh, paint job. I just throw down a base color of Russian green, wash it with Nuln oil, um, or kind of a, a, a blackish wash, and then I dry brush it with that base Russian green again um, with a little bit of white mixed in to give it a nice highlight. Super simple, but they look pretty good. So you can see that is the same model, but it's painted and based, and I like to base my models. I know not everybody does. But I think that looks nice when it's on a table. You're not going to see all those details specifically when you're playing the game. If you're doing a diorama and you want to have something super detailed, you might want to look at some of the other uh, companies that are making models, CNC. Uh, they have really nice stuff, CNC. GHQ, of course, is the best, but I think they're also the most expensive. So I buy models to play games with, so that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to get some affordable stuff. Next up, I have the SA-13 Gopher. This comes in three pieces. You've got two pieces for the launcher, kind of a mount that fits onto the, the hull. And then there's this piece that is the, the rocket launcher itself. Glues together there, and then it goes onto the hull. Here you can see it, it's assembled. It's still in two pieces right now. Um, but again, a fairly nicely detailed model. Little bits of flash back here, but again, nothing that just a, a tiny bit of time with the X-Acto is not going to clean up. You'll have no problem cleaning that. You might have to draw out the hole for that turret as well. Um, what I do for that is I just take my X-Acto, put it in, twist it a little bit, and then it's nice and cleaned out. And that fits in there just fine. And that's the thing. Not glued together. There you go. Fits in there. I'm going to glue these turrets on here once they're painted. Uh, just keeps them in place. I don't need to rotate them for the games I'm playing. So. so again, I have one painted here. So you can see what it looks like when it's painted. Same process to paint it. It's a good looking model. Simple paint job again on the table. You're not going to be disappointed with that. I actually have another model here. I believe this is from CNC. Might be a GHQ actually. But I just kind of wanted to show you the two of them side by side. Let's face them the same. I can't look underneath this because it's base, so to tell you what, for sure which it is, uh, it's either GHQ or CNC. 
but you can see scale wise they're almost identical in size obviously there's some differences in how they're how they're uh, sculpted that that little hatch on the top the X is recessed whereas this one it is uh, uh, I don't know what the right word is it's on top um, But again, unless you're going to look at them this close, I don't think it's a huge deal. When you've got them on the table, they are going to look very, very similar. And you're not going to see much, much difference between these. So this is the CNC or GHQ, and this one is the Heroics and Ross. And again, I just painted up with that simple paint job. And the last one I'm going to show off here is the BMP2. Oh, wait. And these SA13 Gophers are, they're 75 pence. It's the code for these is SM43. And again, for 75 pence, they're a, a, a nice model. It's going to look great on the table. These are the BMP2s with the 30 millimeter cannon. Um, these are SM10, SM10, and again, these are 75 pence. And this one, you can see that hole is filled in. I'll have to clean that out to put the turret in, but you can see nice model, pretty nice detail. Overall, I'm just a pretty nice model. Again, you got a little bit of flash here on the back, so those doors aren't flat like they would be. These you can see with those ribs there on the front, they're not quite as cleanly molded as uh, what the CNC models that I've seen are. But again, when you paint it and you're using it on a table, you're really not going to see much difference. So here is a painted version. So that same batch the model came in that paint it with my simple simple paint job and I think it looks pretty good and then again I have a CNC model to compare it to you so you can see scale wise these are very very close in size there's some variations in, in the mold or the sculpt of course the barrel of the uh, CNC one is actually a bit thinner than what this is, which I'm sure is more accurate scale wise, but it's very, uh, you got to be gentle with it. That's what I'll say. They're easy to break, whereas these are a little bit more sturdy and not as susceptible as bending when you're moving models or whatever. So again, CNC. Heroics and Ross. Get that zoomed in. Uh, I've decided mostly I'm going to be going with Heroics and Ross just because the price is totally, uh, totally worth it as far as I'm concerned for what you're getting for playing games. Again, if you want to do dioramas, you want to pick up the models and scrutinize them, sure, go with one of the other guys or companies. But I think uh, for the price point, the Heroic and Ross stuff is just... It looks good on a table and it's it's very affordable so it's a pretty quick video I just wanted to show off a couple models show you what I'm working on I'm gonna be painting some of these up I probably won't do separate videos for these because the paint is uh, as I said it's the exact same process that I've used for others maybe I'll do some just to highlight a couple of things but I'm not convinced I'm gonna do that if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you want to see more videos like this and the other projects that I'm working on you can subscribe to the channel be sure to click the bell so you get notifications when I post new videos. You can also follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and on Facebook, and there's links to all those below. If you follow me on those, you'll see different games I'm playing and projects that I'm working on that may not make it to video. If you have any questions or comments, you can put it in the comment section. And remember, you don't need to be an expert to paint your models. Even a basic paint job will make for a better game. Thanks for watching.